right, it is good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Praise God. Um, Pastor had quite a time, and I'm sure he'll tell you when he gets back, of uh, getting off the ground and getting gone. Uh, the airlines messed him up, and it was quite a quite an ordeal, but he is now in the air, probably over the Atlantic somewhere, and so um, he'll get there. I'm going to start a subject tonight that is um, taught on very, very little. <clears throat> in fact, most that will teach on it will minimize it and try to put it at something that is not for us, at least to any major degree. But if we are going to be an apostolic church, we are going to do things just like Jesus did it. And so, just like healing the sick, speaking in tongues, whatever, if you're going to be the church, you're going to have to take it all. And so I am going to begin a series to, uh, tonight, and the series will uh, most likely be three-part, and um, it'll be next Wednesday night, part two, and then on Sunday night, Pastor will actually be here on that Sunday night, but he will uh, be dealing with jet lag, so I will conclude it on Sunday night and um, uh, I think we will make some headway. And, and uh, this is something that I have, I actually about 15 years ago, I taught on one time, I think one service. And that is all I have taught on from this uh, pulpit uh, ever. So I am going to begin uh, teaching tonight on casting out devils. And... If I had a live worldwide audience, I'd feel a whole lot of pushback right now because to a large degree in Pentecostal circles, this is very, very um, taboo. But I have a number of scriptures, and I want to begin with uh, Mark chapter 16. I'm going to talk about it as our command. In Mark 16 and 17, Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. We can't just pick out, I'm going to speak with new tongues, but we're not going to cast out devils. In a lot of places, unfortunately, this is something that happens maybe once in a lifetime or once in a great long time. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5 through 8, the Bible says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I don't know if I'm going to uh, talk about it a whole lot. Uh, tonight, maybe just a little bit, but coupled with the kingdom of heaven, the advance of the kingdom of heaven is always casting out devils. There are, I, I think I've got at least two more scriptures that I'll get to in a little while. Um, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8 says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely ye have received, freely give. So Jesus not only did it, and we will uh, in these next three sessions talk about many of the incidents, incidents in which he did it, but he commanded his disciples, the apostles, to do it. 
Now, I want to talk about for a few moments the difference in their culture, and this thing has always fascinated me for, for probably decades. In our generation, uh, how many times have we heard something in some type of media, print, it, it doesn't matter if it's print media or whatever, about wondering is there life on other planets or aliens or, you know, something of that thing. And, and, and every time I, you know, at life outside the world as we know it. And uh, it wasn't that long ago, maybe uh, sometime during this calendar year, it just really hit me and slammed me and I just uh, I almost got offended uh, or aggravated. I don't know exactly what word to say. How dumb people can be that don't read the Bible because... How many times are angels mentioned in the Bible? Devils are mentioned in the Bible? And yet they're looking for aliens, they're looking for life on other planets and all of that kind of stuff. And if they would just look in the word of God, here we go, there it is. Um, but this is a part of our culture. Our culture... Uh, will will quickly gravitate toward, uh, I think there was a movie that came way back, it's been 30 years ago or so, The Exorcist. I, uh, you know, I've heard a lot about it, uh, don't know a lot about it, but, uh, you know, they will, they will gravitate to something, but if you, if you point to something and say, okay, here is the real deal, now they're going to start backpedaling. But in their culture, and, and I, I'll be really honest with you, I don't know how it, it became like that in, in the New Testament culture because it was not evident in the Old Testament. Nowhere in the Old Testament did anyone cast out a devil. This, uh, because God did not give them spiritual authority in the Old Testament that he gave to the New Testament church, to the believers, and then some time ago, several years ago, it, I, I was able to connect the dots. The Lord helped me connect the dots. This is why in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And, and you, you, you're going to talk about it when you're lying down, when you're walking down the street. Uh, basically, all day long, you're going to talk about, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We don't understand why in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we understand that the devils believe that there is one God and tremble. So while they didn't have authority to cast out devils like the New Testament church does, all the time they were talking about one God. Devils were fleeing and trembling. And so that is one thing that gives the one God church the uh, power that it has. But in the, in the um, New Testament Gospels, uh, on quite a number of uh, occasions, the Bible says they brought to him those that were possessed with devils. And I've always wondered, where did they get that understanding? Because it was never taught in the Old Testament. Let me read um, Matthew 4.24. The Bible says, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those that were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Now, how was it? And, I, and, and I'm asking a question to which I do not know the answer. How was it that without any biblical teaching up to that point, did they know what this was I mean how many situations in our culture today can somebody have every type of uh, symptom that we as the church know because we are churched 
and we can pick it out, but our world doesn't have a clue. I mean, we can see people that are absolutely just insane in our, in our world that, that are given to everything imaginable, and nobody has a clue. Um, it is estimated that Jesus spent 30 to 35% of his ministry casting out devils. Now, let's, let's just compare the society that Jesus dealt with, uh, lived in, and what we live in. There was no crack cocaine. There was no abortion. There was no, there was no rampant murder. There, there probably were a few times that it did happen. But it was an extremely rare uh, situation. How about the violence? Just, just not only with, with murder, but we get reports, uh, it, it's in the news from time to time, of cases where somebody is stabbed 20, 30, 40, 50 times. Just, just the, the sheer violence the anarchy in the street, all of the stuff that is, uh, and, and in the last couple of years, we, we you know, and, and, and going back a few years, uh, rioting in the streets and, and just every kind of unrest that is imaginable. Uh, how about homosexuality, married people, that have a spirit of perversion, and yet, wow. And yet, without all of these things, and I have just touched the tip of the iceberg in, in the eels of our society, if we was to sit down and write a list of the things that uh, are in our society that Jesus would not have encountered on any scale in his society, and to see him spend as much time as he did, then uh, there, there's something that we are missing. I have a list that, uh, and I believe it to be a very comprehensive list. I made this list probably 25, 30 years ago of the miracles that Jesus did. Uh, I'll, I'll make this available to anybody that would like to have it. Um, and, and some of you, how many of you would like to uh, get, uh, guess, wait, 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 here we go, guess how many different miracles Jesus performed to people. Now, I'm not talking about calming the storm. That was not ministering to a person. Uh, and there's a couple of other things that he did that were miracles, turn water into wine. That was a miracle, but it did not minister to an individual. How many different uh, things would have happened in these categories? Blind, healed, raising the dead, leprosy, fever, palsy, and then uh, the miscellaneous such as withered hand, issue of blood, the uh, invalid at uh, Bethesda. How many miracles would you guess are mentioned in the Gospels? Just a wild guess. How many? 15? She, you, she says 15. Okay, actually, now, because some of them are, cat, uh, are cataloged in uh, multiple Gospels, it seems like there are more than there are. There are 20 different miracles that are mentioned by name. Now, there are some that are thrown in with others, and, and you can't uh, categorize that. Um, the blind that were healed, there were five, there were two blind men. There was the blind man where he prayed twice in Matthew. There was the man born blind. There were two men. It was a double miracle in Matthew 20. Uh, and then uh, blind Bartimaeus in Matthew or Mark 10, 46. He raised the dead three times. The widow's son, uh, Jairus' daughter, and Lazarus. There were two cases of leprosy, the nameless leper, and then there was the group of ten lepers. 
There were two fever uh, situations, uh, Peter's mother-in-law and the nobleman's son. There were two cases of palsy, the paralytic in Matthew 9, and the centurion's servant, and then the miscellaneous was the withered hand, the issue of blood, and I have scriptures for all of these. Um, the uh, man at the pool of Bethesda, the deaf and impediment of speech, the severed ear, and uh, Luke 14, 2 to 4, the person with dropsy. So that is a total of 20. And yet, uh, let me read to you scriptures. I'm going to, uh, let me skip down, whoever's doing it, to uh, Mark 6 and 12. I'm going to uh, read a few there, and then I'm going to come back up and fill in the gaps. Um, Mark 6 and 12 says, And they went out and preached that men should repent, and they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. In Luke 14, or Luke 4 and 41, the Bible says, And devils came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, and rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Now, let's just take these two, and I'm going to, uh, and, and I'll go into a, another one in, in a few moments. Our, with our present concept, the, the typical concept in, in my exposure in Pentecost, and, and I don't know what it would be like to those that we would consider unchurched. In, in, in most of Pentecost, the concept, if an individual has a devil, they are either foaming at the mouth or wiggling on the floor or some type of uh, just horrible demonstration. And if that is the case, which it isn't, but should that be the case, with that in mind, and, and actually I think most people form an opinion by the demoniac of Gadara where he was cutting him, himself and he was in the tombs and, and uh, he was living a, a very wild life. And probably that forms the opinion of most people as to what an individual is like that, has, that needs deliverance from a, a spirit. If that is true, Let's go back to Mark 6 and 12 and, and just read that and we'll, we'll go through them. And they went out and preached, Mark 6 and, yeah, that men should repent. They cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed. Now when we get start talking about this many, what we probably would, the, the, the idea and, and, uh, that we would have in our mind is here's all these people that are just acting spastic. Let's read again Luke 4 and 41. And devils came, or also came out of many, crying out. And so we'd wonder what kind of society was that? All these people are going berserk and acting crazy in the street and all of this because of that word many. In, in Matthew 12 and 21, uh, the Bible says, And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. This, is, this uh, was the... Uh, symptoms of the guy that had a, uh, had a devil. He was blind and dumb. He, he could not see and he could not speak. Now, uh, not everybody that is blind and not everyone that has a severe speech impediment has a devil, but in this case, that was the case. Um, And he healed him insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake 
and Saul. So in this particular case, somebody that had a devil just simply was blind. Um, and all the people were amazed, verse 23, and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Now, I'm going to come back to this in just a moment, but this is a very uh, interesting point because in their culture, and, and, and this is another thing I have tried to figure out, how did they know, how did they know who was the prince of devils? How did they know there was such a thing as prince of devils? devils because it's only mentioned in the Old Testament one time in Daniel 10 and 13 about the prince of Persia and then the prince of Greece and so it's only mentioned one time but these people had enough understanding in their culture though they got it wrong when they were attributing it to Jesus, yet they knew there was such a thing. He casts out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every uh, city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Another good question. How did they cast them out? But that's not my point. My point is they understood more than most church people do in our generation with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How they knew... I don't know anybody that knows. That's one of those things that we'll just have to wonder about. But if I, by, uh, but if I cast out devils, verse, are we on verse 27? But if I, by Beelzebub, cast out uh, devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. This is the second verse I have read in the last few minutes that couples the coming or advancing, advancing of the kingdom of God with casting out devils. Here's the deal. Satan is the prince and power of the air. He's the God of this world. He set up his kingdom, his government. The Bible tells us that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, in order for somebody who is lost to see the gospel, believe the gospel, understand the gospel, the God of this world, who the Bible says has blinded their minds, he's got to be prayed off of them. Why is it that you can talk to somebody about one God, you can talk to somebody about baptism in Jesus' name, or, and, 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 and you can show them the scripture, Acts 2.38, then Peter said unto them, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And they don't see it. And you can quote scripture after scripture after scripture, and it's just like you're at a brick wall. It's because the God of this world has blinded their minds. And so in order for the kingdom of God to be advanced, the kingdom of darkness has got to be cast out. With this two... Uh, with this one man here in, in Matthew uh, 12, there were two physical symptoms that was accompanying it, blindness and, uh, and deafness. Now, uh, before I go on, 
or, or let me read one more scripture in Luke 11 and 20. That's the uh, next one that I have here in line. The Bible says, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, this is a second verse. It was in Matthew 12 and 28. If I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. There are two things that we as the church must do. In the first verse of Acts, the Bible says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. We preach the gospel and we demonstrate the gospel. If we do not demonstrate the gospel, our preaching of the gospel does not have the effect that it is supposed to have. It was through miracles all the way through the, through the Gospels in the ministry of Jesus and also in the uh, ministry of the apostles in the book of Acts that when they saw the miracles, they believed. What we preach is not just a philosophy. If all we do is preach, we have a philosophy. That's why we've got to demonstrate the gospel. That's why we lay hands on the sick, and we pray, and God heals. That's why so many miracles happen uh, if, if we will pray and believe is because it is necessary for the kingdom of God. Now, I want to go back and um, pick up where I, where I skipped over, and I believe we're going to go back to Matthew 8 and... 16. I believe we read Matthew 4 and 24. And what I'm dealing with right now uh, to set the stage is we've got to understand the difference in culture as far as understanding. I would say that, and, and, and I'll say it again, there's just so few people that have have even seen one cast out. It's possible for people to sit on Pentecostal pews for a lifetime and never see what Jesus did the most. This is why people are still bound. I'll come back to it later. But Jesus walked to the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says he came forth and he was in his grave clothes, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. He was alive, but he was bound. And that's why so few people, I say so few people, let me, let me say that, that's why a lot of people, they love God, they're doing their best, but when, when the Holy Ghost moves, they're bound. There's not the liberty in the Holy Ghost that they should have, and that's because grave clothes have not been taken off of them. In Matthew uh, 8 and 16, um, the Bible says, And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with demons, devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Mark 1, 32 to 34. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Let's go to another one. Uh, Matthew 1522, and behold, a woman of Cana came out of the same coast. I don't think this scripture, I added this scripture so it may not be uh, on the screen. Uh, this is the Syrophoenician woman. Uh, we know it well. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And, and, and I keep coming back to it because there are so many scriptures that I've already read. How did she know?
But the difference in their culture, they somewhere in the 400 silent years, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll just be honest with you, I'm still absolutely baffled how they had such an understanding among them that most in the religious world don't have today. But I'm going to tell you, I, 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 strongly, I, I strongly feel, I, I, I'll tell you what God is doing in the world right now. He's trying to bring his church up just a little, uh, up another notch. This is not the time for us to come to church and play church. We call ourselves Pentecostal, but really a more appropriate word would be apostolic because we are trying our best to be like the apostles and operate like the apostles. It is so important, and let me get off the subject just for a moment, for the gifts of the Spirit to operate. If, if the gifts of the Spirit do not operate in our lives, we need to find a place of prayer and, and find a walk with God until the gift, some gift of the Spirit starts to operate in our life. It, it's not going to be the same thing. God is going to use everybody individually, uh, differently. But um, the gifts of the Spirit have to operate. Church is not something that we come and, and go through uh, motions and just do a few things and, and uh, sing a few songs and... and uh, Pray for a few minutes and, and go home. Something has got to happen. People's lives have got to be changed. And um, Let me drop down. Here is uh, an interesting, in Luke chapter 9, verse 49, if you can find that, and I'll try to pick it up there. Luke <clears throat> 9 and 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with us. That's a buzzword for saying he, he didn't go to our church. Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Now, here we go. Here's this guy. Perhaps he just stood on the fringe somewhere and watched what Jesus did and thought in his mind, I can do that. And so he went out without a commission from Jesus, without the disciples knowing anything about it, without, he just went out and said, I'm going to try this. And evidently it worked because in John's account, when John was relaying the incident to Jesus, he said, uh, we saw one casting out. He didn't say we saw one trying to cast one out and he was making a mess of it and it didn't work. We saw him doing it. And again, it begs the question, how did he understand and how did the people he were that he was ministering to understand? I, 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 I'm kind of going in circles on this one thing, but, but if we ever grasp the, how much that culture that Jesus lived in understood it, it was just as normal to them as singing a, a, a song is in our church. It was, it was, it was just just as normal as having church. If, if a group of people is going to get together and, and uh, they've got all of these issues, some are going to be healed, some devils are going to be cast out, and, and all of this kind of stuff is happening, and it wasn't a big deal to them, that was normal. So 
So, um, with a little bit of time that I have left, I'm going to uh, shift gears now. And uh, I, I think I have established the fact that, that during the time of Jesus, it was, it was, the, nor it was the norm. Um, let me, just before I go, just with, with the difference in our culture, the violence that's in our culture, and the, just the, um, just like the satanic rock music, I heard a story probably close to 40 years ago. I can't tell you that it is true. I can't verify it. It, it just makes sense. Uh, the story that I heard was that there is, was one of these satanic rock singers that made a pact with the devil that if he would, Satan would, I guess, bless what he was doing, that he would change his name from a man's name to a woman's name. And his name, first name was Alice. Now, I can't verify that story. Okay, all right, well, there's my verification. All right, same story, 40 years apart. With all of the, the, the stuff that is there, Um, now, in Matthew 7 and 21, I'm going to make several points here. Matthew 17 and 21, if I, you know what, there's some of these I may have added after I give you the thing, and so if so, then uh, just do the best you can. Matthew 17 and 21, Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Okay. My point from this scripture is this kind. If there is a this kind, there is a that kind. All devils are not the same kind. All of them have a different after, after they enter into a person, have a function. I will get into it uh, a little bit later down the road when I talk about open doors. What opens doors to uh, a spirit to come in? But whenever a spirit enters in, let's just say, let's just say it is a spirit of fear. And it enters in through a particular doorway. The only thing that spirit can do in an individual is cause fear. It cannot cause lust. So if you have a person that is bound by fear and bound by lust at the same time, you've got multiple spirits. Um... In uh, not only that, spirits are ranked. Satan's been around a long time, and he was in heaven before he got cast into the earth. God is always organized. There are angels. There are archangels. We understand what that would be. There is a pecking order, and, and I've, I mentioned it's been years uh, uh, ago. There's a pecking order even in the uh, animal kingdom. Everything that God created, there's a pecking order. There is, in the home, we don't, that's not what we call it, but there is an authority. The Bible says uh, for the man to be the head of the house and for the man to love his wife, and that's not my subject. So, But, but there, is, there is an authority in the, in the home. There's an authority in the church. In the animal world, I, w I watched one time on my back deck, I, I set out this uh, uh, corn cob. And um, you know how, how the animals like the corn in, in the wintertime. And here come a sparrow, and the sparrow did really good picking up uh, the crumbs that, were, that had been left by a previous visitor there 
and until a cardinal came. And when the cardinal came, the, the, the uh, sparrow left. And the sparrow, or, or the cardinal did real well and was, was feasting until the blue jay. There's a, there, was, there was a blue jay behind my house. And, if, and there's more blue jays down south than there are up north. But those blue jays are very feisty. If, if you've been around them, seen them enough, watched them enough to know their, their temperament, their nature, uh, Blue Jay's very feisty. And, and so he ran the cardinal off. But then came the woodpecker. There was a woodpecker behind, uh, in a tree uh, behind my house. And the woodpecker ran off the Blue Jay. But then came the squirrel. This really happened. I'm standing there watching this happen over a period of uh, a little time. Here came the squirrel, and the squirrel hops up there, and the woodpecker goes. So there is, uh, I'm glad there's no bears around <laughs> back. But there's always a, a, a line of organization in the military. They're privates and there are generals and they're everything in between and everybody knows their place. The same thing is true in God's kingdom. God is very well organized. He has, uh, in, in, in his world, he has ranks of authority. And when Satan revolted and did his deal, he was smart enough that he kept that same, a, a similar structure. That's why in Ephesians 6 and 12, the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, a principality is going to be higher in rank. This is the, uh, going to be the, uh, the rank that is going to rule over the city, over a city. And there's rulers over cities, there's rulers over states, there's rulers over nations. That's why you can go from one city to another and, or in one state to another, have a totally, a totally different spirit. There are some places where the, the ruling, I, I was in uh, Bangladesh a couple of years ago and we were on our way to the crusade where at that, that particular night, uh, uh, it was two, two nights later from this, when I'm, uh, from the, it was the third night of the crusade, but 3,000 received the Holy Ghost. But as we are coming up to uh, the crusade and, and thousands of people are gathering there, I sensed in my spirit such a horrible fear around that place. And I'm trying to figure this out. We're going to church. There's going to be hundreds. The first night there was... 500 people that received the Holy Ghost, I think it was. Uh, I'm not, I believe that's what it was. It, either 500 received the Holy Ghost the first night or either 1,500 got healed the first night and, and, the, and then the other was the second night, then the third night, 3,000 got the Holy Ghost. But, but such a fear. And, and uh, it was, may have been the next day or, or later whenever Brother Corbin mentioned that in that area, those people worship fear. Now, don't try to figure it out. That's not my point for tonight. But, but uh, fear ruled in that jurisdiction. You go into the, to the big city of, of Dhaka, that same spirit, you didn't feel that same spirit. There are some cities where there is, and in this city, several years ago, a number of years ago, there used to be a very high suicide rate. Some... You can guess what uh, uh, spirit would rule over Vegas. It's going to be different than a uh, uh, spirit that rules over some small town. You go to uh, cities like Chicago. Oh, brother. There's, there's, and, and, and these spirits will work together. Uh, you're you're going to have a violent, you're going to have one head, but he's going to have a whole list of uh, subordinates that are around him. And, and just if, if you want to really uh, get an idea, just sometime in your mind, just get you a pencil and paper and just think, okay, now what operates in Chicago? 
what would be the major spirits that operate in Chicago? Violence, murder, I mean, just name them. And, 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 and let's just, let me just pick out a, a city. Those same spirits are not predominant, not that there might be one or two of them wandering through, let's say, Rochester. Rochester, you go th th right now, and I, and I haven't really, I just drove through. Uh, there's probably a, a sports spirit that is rising up there. Um, but um, they're, they're organized and uh, territorial, and, 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 and they have it. They are ranked. Well, you get down to <clears throat> the um, little foot soldiers. It is, uh, these guys are what normally will infest humans. A principality that is over a city is not going to get in one individual. He'll have his buddies in an individual that has opened doors, but, but uh, it, it, it's a whole different, um, different level. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in uh, high places. And, and, and let me say, this is why there has to be in the church a gift of discerning of spirits. There has to be. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 10, I may not have put that on there. I, I guess I did. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. Let me ask you, why is it necessary to have a gift of discerning of spirits. Why did God put a gift of discerning of spirits in the church? Because people without, or, or people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost can see a situation and not discern or judge what it is, whereas in order. Satan is such a slick, sly spirit. Can't call him a person, you know. what? So deceptive that someone with the baptism of the Holy Ghost but that does not have the gift of discerning of spirits can look at demonic activity and not know what it is. It takes a person with a gift of discerning of spirits to say, that's a spirit. Whereas somebody that doesn't have that gift will say, oh, that, that's flesh. And that's what we run into in the religious world. Oh, that's flesh. And, and, and the thing I've heard so much, you can't cast out flesh. Well, that's very true. But if everything is flesh, why is everybody in, having the same hang-up for their entire life and never getting victory over it? Some spirits are more wicked than others. I'll have to close with this. Some spirits are more wicked than others. When we think, well, they're all evil. Well, they are all evil. They are all unclean. They are all doomed to a lake of fire. But in Matthew... 12 and 45, the Bible says, Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even uh, so shall it also, uh, be also unto this wicked generation. And so I'm sitting and thinking, okay, now I need an illustration or I need an example of what is more wicked than um, what is a spirit that is more wicked. Uh, spirit that is rampant, well, um, 
Okay, I'll, I'll use that. Murder is more wicked than a spirit of fear. All right? Um, there's a lot of people that are afraid of, afraid of a lot of things and can't understand why, but um, it doesn't cause them to go out and take another person's life. And so, um, here, here's the deal. And I have thought, I, we had this one guy here. M many of you would know him, know him well. Um, I, I tried so long to help this guy. I really did. And finally, I realized it doesn't matter. This guy is going to do what he's going to do. And... Um, so I kind of backed off, but I did use him, and I hope nobody thinks I'm bad, but I did use him as a guinea pig on some new guys. I would cast spirits out of that guy, and he'd go back out to his old lifestyle, and everything would come back in and with their buddies, and it was a mess. And he'd hang around and hang around, and I'd cast them out, they'd come back in. I'd cast them out, they'd come back in, finally. Um, if somebody isn't going to make a commitment that I'm going to change my life, and I'm going to live for God, you're better off to stay like you are and keep what you got than to wind up with some extra baggage because they will try to come back. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to share some, some interesting um, situations that I've run into. And um, some of you probably have witnessed a few of them. But um, if we're going to be a church that Jesus wants us to be, we are going to be a church that takes authority over spirits and displaces them. If Jesus cast out many devils and we can't say the same thing, I just wonder if that's what he intended. No, I don't wonder. Praise God. Let's stand. Why don't we gather around the front? before we go home. My notes will be available uh, to anybody, everybody. I uh, am doing it pretty, uh, I'm doing it electronically so I can um, make them available to anybody. They won't have <clears throat> all of the comments that I make, but uh, they'll be in sufficient order that you'll be able to, to kind of figure it out. So don't hesitate to give me an email or, a, or, a, or an address somewhere that I, <clears throat> if you want them, that, that you can have them. Jesus, we thank you for your word. You're going to help us. We're going to learn some stuff. We're going to be an apostolic church. We're going to do things like you intend us to do. Thank you for that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we're offline, right? <laughs>